This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is looking at the environment, in particular, the revolution of our policies governing the environment and what changed over the course of the last 30, 40, 50 years to create laws and policies to govern how we keep our environment beautiful or as beautiful as we can and looking at the large case studies that have caused our country to readdress its approach to the environment and pollution. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Now, as we know, America leads the world in the economy and a lot of different materials and in industries are huge in America and lead across the world stage in terms of trade, imports, exports, and the dollar is very strong in terms of currency. Now, there are changes afoot in different areas of the world, like in Asia and Middle East, but America has been on the forefront of industrialization and production for the last 30, 40 years. And industrialization started in the late 1700s in America and really just ballooned out from there. Now, the unfortunate effect or cause and effect of being a mass industrial country is the amount of pollution that has been created. And before, really in 1970, there wasn't many laws governing this pollution or the production of waste and how we deal with it. So since 1970, there's been this, this push, both in the public and in DC, for the government to address this and produce laws and policies to help clean up the environment that has been created over the last 200 years. Now, one of the first big environmental issues or disasters that happened was in 1962, a book was published by Rachel Carson, which triggered this massive movement of environmental uh, consciousness and awareness that hadn't been there before. And it was all about the use of DDT. Now, this is a toxic chemical that was used in agriculture uh, back in the uh, 30s and 40s and 50s. Now, they even won a Nobel Prize on this new chemical that would kill pests because that what the pests were basically affecting all the crops. And the U.S. Army used this DDT, this newly formed magical gas that would eradicate all the all the bugs and insects and maintain a high yield of crop for the farmers across the US. However, the adverse effects on humans were initially not understood, but then later on realized that this, this chemical that was being sprayed all over towns across the, uh, the farmlands of America was not good and had various chronic effects to the, to the humans that would absorb or breathe in this harmful, toxic chemical. and. Basically, JFK, after 63, after this book was released, kind of reduced the use of DDT, but not stopped it, but definitely reduced it. But this is the first example of a major environmental issue that plagued America. Now, in 1969 was the next big disaster that happened with the environment, which was the Santa Barbara oil spill. Now, there were a bunch of oil rigs, offshore oil rigs, that were, were located in the uh, syncline anticlines just off the coast of Los Angeles basically off Santa Barbara and a bunch of faults there and there was accumulation of oil and natural gas. Now in extracting this in 69 in January there was a large spill that happened for 11 days and basically was the third the third largest oil spill in the history of, of America and it covered 100 square miles and 35 miles of coastline and very thick oil and this was a very major disaster for the environment, including the, the biome off the ocean and on land to so both terrestrial and oceanic biomes, the kelp forests. And this really was a, an eye-opener for the public because it was on their doorstep. You had this massive city of LA right there and you couldn't really disguise it, hide it or cover it up. It was just right there next to the coastline and the public were outraged about the industry of pumping oil. Our third example of a major disaster happened in 1978 in an area of Niagara Falls called Love Canal. That was close to Buffalo, which is a very big city in New York State. And it's also close to Niagara Falls in Ontario, in Canada, and close to Lake Ontario, one of the Great Lakes. So this was a major disaster in regards of a 
company that illegally or not illegally but definitely dumped its chemical waste byproducts into a unused canal and then covered it up with a thin layer of clay and, and sand thinking that would do the job that would be fine for the the health of the residents that lived in this love canal neighborhood unfortunately it wasn't and there was horrible side effects from the chemical waste of the people that lived in the area the children there was a school built above the chemical waste dumping ground which was horrendous and there wasn't anything really done to help residents until later on when they started to uncover the extent of the disaster both the chemicals that were dumped there the extent of the of the seepage and leakage into the local water and groundwater and drinking water and the long-term chronic effects that were happening to the people of this area so there's a timeline in the US of when these laws for the environment were basically suggested and came into practice. Now, prior to 1945, there was very little general regulation from state or federal that governed pollution and the environment and the effect on the environment. There was common law, which was basically down to the judge's basically perception of the case if anything was brought to the, to the court of law in that state or town. And the era of conservation was the, the starting of an idea of let's conserve the environment, let's conserve certain areas of natural beauty and wilderness like national parks. Now the first real kind of law, so to speak, was Rivers and Harbors Act in 1899. But the, the term environmental law didn't really come into place until 1969. So after 1945, you had a lot of these different events or series of events that defined the formation of the EPA in 1970. The first was the air pollution of Donora, PA, killed many people. We had the Federal Air Pollution Act as, as a response. Then we had Silent Spring, the book from Rachel Carson, come out about DDT and the effect. Then we had the Sierra Club uh, formed and pushing for Solid Waste Disposal Act in Congress. And then we had the Defense Fund, so we had money put aside for these different acts and trying to resolve the issues that we saw. And again, in 1970, we had the Clean Air Act and the first Earth Day, and again, the formation of the EPA. So the real state of the modern movement of the environmental policy and law basically came for those eight years between 1962 and 1970. So after 1970 and the formation of the EPA, you would think that the country would get a grip on the environment and various other activities and industries would be reduced and stopped. However, there was a series of very large disasters that kind of took precedence and then there were, there were federal acts that were designed to combat this. So the first was the evidence of vinyl chloride, uh, which is a carcinogen, a cancer-causing uh, chemical compound. And then it was the Federal Water Policy or Pollution Act in 1972. In 1974, the Federal Safe Drinking Water Act was a big one. In 76 was a Toxic Substances Act, again, large. But unfortunately, in 78, with Love Canal, we kind of realized that we need more work done in these certain areas that were high for in industrial action and a lot of chemical waste were dumped. Then they had Three Mile Island, which was the, um, the meltdown of the nuclear power plant in PA. Then we had Circular Form, which is a, basically a separate fund just for certain sites around the country that were deemed hazardous and required immediate action and remediation. And then there was following amendments to Superfund, which more money was allocated and the sites were expanded to cover more areas that were polluted. And this happened in 86. And then we had the Exxon Valdez oil spill off the coast of Alaska in 1989. So again, we had more development of federal laws for the two decades between 1970 and 1990. So now discussing more recent times, but basically post-1990 into the 21st century, we had some more advancement on bills, and we had the Oil Production Control Act and Clean Air Act again amendments for the third time. In 93, we had the development of sustainable ideas and thinking. 96, again, was an amendment to the Safe Drinking Water Act and Land Disposal Act and the National Invasive Species Act. Then in 2002, we had the Farm Bill and 
the Brownfield uh, Act circular, which was basically an expanded of the Superfund site and included more Brownfield sites, which are more of a moderate pollution threat than the immediate threat the Superfund was initially created for. Then we had the Energy Act in 2005 and 2007 was Energy Independence Act was trying to get this country independent from its energy sources and import export requirements from other parts of the world. Again, looking at an economic standpoint, but again, looking at uh, more renewable energy sources if possible and trying to reduce the amount of fossil fuels that we consume to reduce the impact on the environment. Again, this is all up to interpretation of if, this, if these things are working or if these acts are being implemented properly or if the right money is being allocated or even if companies or states are even trying to be sustainable or reduce their pollution. There has been over the past 40 years, as discussed, many acts and policies and laws both in the federal government and statewide that have done a lot of good work in terms of reducing pollution and putting definite parameters on the use of industrial chemicals, dumping waste, landfill sites, remediation, and a lot more stringent laws on what people can and cannot do, which will affect the environment. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.